Previously on The Next Game Boss. Five teams from IGN's Indie Open House program competed in their very first challenge to design the ultimate villain in a video game based on outrageous genres. Violent FPS in a kiddie animated rated E game. <laughs> Who came up with this? I want to punch someone. With such tricky themes to work with, the teams were forced to think outside the box and surprised everyone with their creativity. But other presentations borderlined on absurd and failed to impress. I couldn't see how this character would, would work in a game. It just seemed like a bunch of random stuff kind of thrown together. Ultimately, guest judge Damon Hatfield chose Phobia Portal as his favorite game boss created by Team Penta. But while it's fun to play favorites, it's not up to our guest judge to decide who wins. It's up to you. Which team wowed our at-home audience and received the most votes? Find out next on this episode of The Next Game Boss. I didn't really like what Damon said about us being a bunch of stuff thrown together random. Even though it was thrown together random, our category was extra random. You know what I mean? It was the futuristic space comedy RPG. Come on now. Yeah, exactly. I can so, barely say that in one breath. I yeah, know, that's terrible. <laughs> so, what do you guys think about uh, Damon, the guest judge? Do you think like he influenced who won the challenge? You know, being uh, being so. outside of. Uh, the filming for yeah. episode one. I think Damon did a good job, honestly. He is gonna sway some votes you know, uh, for Pent Up. That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would help. You know, not that I'm biased, right? Yeah. I think what was interesting though is like seeing, you know, comments on YouTube, how people kind of responded to all the different ideas. It seems like a lot of people out there thought this is like our real projects like right. like we got I know people at home watching probably think that we're doing the next game boss all day long but actually I think it's a day or two a month that we film this the rest of the time we're actually working really hard on our main project which is rap scallion in Terabang, they have a game called Super Combo Man. Uh, two of those guys showed up originally, and then they had two more just come out recently. Ethereal is a little bit quieter than everyone else, a little bit less socially active, but they're in college, so you know, I think they're just kind of finding their way, but their game looks interesting. Uh, Alex Austin is the lead guy on Cryptic Sea, and they made Gish, so they obviously know what they're doing. So I think everybody's in here busting ass and like working really hard. And then like Pent Up Games, who won the endorsement on the last challenge, they don't have a game to show because when they come in here, which is like one or two days a week, all they do is play Street Fighter. So how are you guys doing with your uh, your real game? How much longer do you guys think till you have like a milestone of some kind? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I had no clue what they were talking about. They started making their game four months ago. They haven't done anything. Pent Up, they're a joke. So what happened to Amy? I haven't seen her in a while. I don't know, man. Have so. we talked to Alex? Is he doing okay? And they had like three or four games they had been working on together. Yeah. Amy's taking a break. She's basically uh, taking a break from doing indie games. You know, it's it can be kind of stressful and stuff, so. I mean, let's be frank. Everybody here likes Amy for sure. She's awesome, but she screwed Alex. Like, he's kind of screwed now. He's got to yeah, go find yeah. another artist. How are you going to make yeah. a game without an artist? I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens next. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. 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 I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is we've tallied up the audience votes and one team will be receiving $500 for winning the previous design challenge. The bad news is one of the bottom four teams will be asked to leave the boss room and will be eliminated. I was pretty shocked. You know, it kind of puts pressure on the future events like, oh, are we gonna be next? Kills the spirit a little bit. The top two teams who receive the most votes from our viewers is Team Interabang and Team Pent Up. But there can only be one team on top. And that winner is... Team Pent Up. Congratulations. It was really exciting just knowing that people agreed with the judge. We had the opportunity to take it seriously and that apparently resonated with the audience. Unfortunately, that leaves us with the bottom three. Team Runt, Team Ethereal, and Team Cryptic C. Team Runt. You are safe 
from elimination. Yes, awesome. And are still in the running for the next game boss. Team Cryptic C. Alex, the audience wasn't too fond of your Hitler Raptor idea. And so you got the least amount of votes from our audience. Sorry to say, Alex, but this time your game is over. Please leave the boss room. Well, seeing Alex lose like that kind of brings, I think, a different perspective to us yeah. on how we're going to focus on these challenges. I guess that's one less heavyweight challenger to compete against. For those of you still here, it's anybody's game right now. As game designers, you all have great ideas, but it's how you communicate your vision that is most important. To test your communication skills, you will be asked to design your presentation based on a fellow team's vision. I was excited that the challenge actually involved the games that we're working on. Personally, I was a little on edge about allowing another team to mess with our gameplay, because it's not finished yet. So Team Runt, you will be working with Team Ethereal. Oh yeah. Nice. Team Terror Bang, you will be working with Team Pent Up. Here are the specifics of your challenge. Thank you. Thank you. All right, good luck guys. Thank Let you. the contest begin. Thanks. Okay, based on your fellow team's main video game project, you have one hour to design a unique level and environment that will extend the gaming experience for the player. Each team will be judged individually on creativity and how well their design fits into their fellow team's existing vision of the game. All right. Wow. So this is a level design challenge. And level design, right? which is good because you, you know, need some more levels in your game, right? <laughs> Actually, I think we have like 15. You guys got four. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was happy to be paired up with Runt. It's kind of like that, that cool odd couple feel. Like, okay, well, since they work differently than we do, what would they come up with? So our game has parkour. If you're not familiar with parkour, it's kind of like free running. Where people are like jumping from rooftop to rooftop. Right. right. So this is what the character does. And as you're running, the influence, the gravity is growing. If it catches up to you, it's going to start pulling pulling you back to an earlier part of the level. Right. And then you have to reset. I actually was uh, excited to be paired up with Ryan. We're all definitely great uh, platformer fans, so it was great to have the chance to design something out of the box that is not in our realm of everyday thought. What about your guys' game? Yeah, tell us. Our essence was a medieval combat game, and we wanted to make a game that had some of the best elements of Counter-Strike, but in uh, melee combat only. And it's all about tactically uh, engage another armored opponent you've got like a, a linear narrative for your levels, right? So you're trying to actually tell the story from level to level to level. Right. Ethereal, even though their content is like really, really realistic, they've got enough fodder there creatively to do something with. I'm really, really, really glad we didn't draw pent up because there wasn't gonna be anything to work with. Can you guys see? Yep. Yeah. So just a basic mock-up of the game and how it works. So the basic idea of the game is a, a hybrid genre of SRPG and trading card game. For the strategy part, we're taking mostly from Fire Emblem and Advanced Wars. Can we describe it in a less derivative way, perhaps? Uh, <laughs> I, no. Nate, you wanna you wanna give it a shot, Nate? Nate, do you wanna give it a shot? Yeah, yeah, I, can, I guess he can't yeah. hear me. Or it's lagging out. I guess whatever. It was extreme challenge trying to understand exactly what their game is, and they still don't know what their game is. We definitely had an advantage over the Terrabang because we could actually play their game. So this is basically Super Combo Man. The game's about the character struggles. He's trying to take care of his little brother, but whenever he gets a job, because he's socially awkward, he thinks like, oh, well, what would Super Combo Man do? And that usually entails beating up everybody on the scene. So in this case, it's a construction job, but it's open to any kind of zany, crazy, fun idea you might have, you know? Their game was like super fun to play. So it's yeah. just like, you're playing their game and you're just like, I can do this in any kind of environment. It doesn't matter. Their game's gonna be fun no matter what. Good luck. Cool, cool. So what we learned from Run is they're all about creating really interesting environments because they have this like neo-Victorian kind of setting, right? In that type of steampunk world, you've, you've got to have some kind of ship that floats up into the air. Uh, what is this area? Like yeah. a crew cabin? Well, no, but you're not in the actual cabin. You're in the uh, the luggage area. You can parkour off of suitcases that are moving. Like it's a ship, and so like the luggage oh. is bouncing around, and yeah. you're bouncing yeah. off the yeah. luggage. Yeah. Like the most ship. amazing part about this is the Zeppelin was mostly designed as a level, but we told G with 20 minutes to go, hey, G, we need a concept piece for this. And 20 minutes later, we had this awesome piece of this tram, and uh, it, wow. it totally shaped it all for us.
level that we came up with for Team Ethereal was Gossamer Castle. It was named Gossamer because that actually means heavenly. It kind of plays on the word ethereal. So we wanted to try to keep in line with their IP. The whole idea is to get to the throne, right? right. The content was dry, honestly. We were working with the subject matter that we were given. Medieval, realistic. Okay, we'll make a castle for you guys, right? Yeah, it wasn't outer space. <laughs> Dude, you gotta start on the next map because we only got about five minutes to finish everything up. The level design for Interrobang, you have to design a workplace that you can beat people up in. It's a lot of fun right. to attack that problem. Our artist Nate is uh, actually out of town for this challenge, so we might be a little screwed there. Evan, can you flip the one on the previous page? So Evan's drawing like set pieces. Ashton's working on uh, character designs, and uh, Nate and I are working on kind of the presentation of the whole thing. The remote communication was, was very slow. We had problems with Skype. We had a lot of technical difficulties. I think the castle should be pretty central here. You know, so they can, if they do get in, they can go around and flank. We should add the element of breakables. Does that work though in the context of how this game plays? Uh, who knows? They didn't talk about like how this works. With what we gathered from Pent Up, it was a real challenge to figure out how their game worked. They don't even have a playable build. So just, yeah, put trees like sporadically around that area. So based on the, the knowledge that we got from Pent Up, we did the best we could. With only having a total of one hour to complete their design challenge, the clock winds down quickly and each team scrambles to put the finishing touches on their presentation. It's not long before their panels have to be collected, and it's time to level up to the boss room for judgment. Good job, guys. Welcome back, everyone. Today's guest judge is Greg Miller, executive at Greg! Yeah! Oh, yeah! Big deal, man. <laughs> All right, so as you probably know, he's executive editor here at IGN. Yeah! Thanks for being with us, Greg. No problem. Thanks for having me. Let's do it. Let's see some games. Huh? All right. So, Team Runt, let's see what we have in store for us. Absolutely. So we are Team Runt. We had the level design for uh, Team Ethereal. So we looked and we said, what's missing? You know, we see a game that has a medieval setting that currently has four levels and there's no castle, and there's no capture the flag mechanic. We saw that as an immediate problem. So what we wanted to do is come up with a solution for these guys. We've got these four level zones, basically. We've got the moat section, outer wall, courtyard, and throne room. You're trying to progress through this level, right? Um, I didn't feel like he was liking it all that much. I mean, hearing it described is even mind-numbing to me, honestly. <laughs> like, it's just boring. Mm -hmm. And so you've got a time limit, of course. If you can't take the throne room in, you know, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. then the game's over. All right, so Team Ethereal, what do you guys think? No, I think it looks great. Uh, we, the yeah. big concern I have is that uh, a castle usually sieged by more than 16 yeah, people, and our game is people. limited to 16 on a side, so you'd really have to be creative in how you pulled that off. Keep in mind is there's only 16 people guarding the castle, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That would then seem like a lot of space for 16 against 16. They would all be completely spread out, lose the tactics. Yeah. Right. So it's a manner. <laughs> <laughs> So we are Team Interrobang, and we are working on Team Pent Up's game, which is a strategy card-based RPG that is yet untitled. It is set in a medieval fantasy world, so it's it's very cartoony, it's very playful. Some of the content they showed us, it was all daytime, you know, we felt like some mood might help out. Yeah, I was blown away. Yeah. Look what he did in an hour. We've yeah. been working on this for months. What's going on? That is, Photoshop that is some kind of yeah. talent because that looks way better than our game looks like. <laughs> they said that what we created was better than what they already created. That's all that's all that needs to be said. <laughs> So Team Interrobang has Super Combo Man, 
The level that they've got right now is a construction zone, and we decided that space was the next frontier. So the level that we went with was uh, him having a job on a space station where he's uh, supposed to be cleaning everything up. Um, gravity fluctuations throughout the level where, you know, they, the level might turn upside down. Also, as, uh, as part of their game, at the end of every level, you get, uh, you get fired. So as you come up into here, you actually hit a switch, which opens the engine port and blasts you out into space, effectively firing you into space. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, team Interrobang, what are your thoughts? Uh, I think the mechanics are pretty interesting and they may work. What, what I think should be added though is more physics stuff. So like our game has a lot of breakable objects and things and puzzles that you manipulate. I think it's crazy how it's flipped because how we articulated our playable game really gave them an advantage over us not really understanding how their game worked. Uh, so we did our uh, level four team run, who's working on Rapscallion, which is a parkour uh, platformer, meaning uh, free running and wall jumping, using those kind of techniques to traverse through the level. So moving through uh, one of their levels, which is an underground uh, tunnel, we come out of the tunnel and we see the cable car Zeppelin. Now what's cool about this is there are multiple ways to get to the end of this level, and it's a very vertical um, level, but there are more like gravity wells with that. So you have to make a lot of wall jumping on this, but because the ship is moving and all sorts of things, luggage and cargo is actually falling, so you use these falling pieces to help you move up these really narrow shafts. Why does a cable car Zeppelin have a drill on the front of it? <laughs> Ross, they've laid the cable where they're going. What are they drilling? There's nothing there to drill. <laughs> he mentioned the drill and we kind of knew that the drill was probably dumb, um, but uh, one of our team members really wanted it, and no, I mean, why not? In an exciting world where things are supposed to be eccentric and weird, you know, why, you know throw a drill on a, on a tramp. So, Team Runt, what did you guys think? I think what's great about this is it's honestly conceptually it's right up our alley. Uh, one thing that I would notice, I would find it really hard uh, for actually our gravity stones that are in our game to kind of fit in here conceptually right. inside something that's kind of sure. moving this yeah. way. Could be difficult. Uh, but what I did like especially is the falling luggage idea. Yeah. You guys yeah. had the luggage falling and you could do tricks yep. off of it. That was awesome. You guys yeah. hit it on the head there. Yeah, awesome. Thanks guys. Ethereal did really well. I mean, they're working with our intellectual property. It's not hard to come up with a good idea. So Greg, now that you've seen all the presentations, who do you think is your favorite to win? Well, it was a tough decision, but uh, Team Interabang, uh, Team Runt, you both lost. You, <laughs> you are losers, awesome. you are in the bottom 50%. But the reason, I want you to take sauce in this, the reason I think the other teams won out over you, or at least are in my final two, top two as they say, uh, is because I like the idea of your game so much. So can I get Team Ethereal up here and Team Penta? It was interesting to see how Greg took the, the judging because it was meant to be on what's the most interesting level design and I feel like one of the main things he said was well I'm pulling these two teams up because I really like the ideas of this game and it's like great we've come up with a great idea for a game and Team Ethereal's reaping the rewards. Team Ethereal, I like that you guys captured the idea, the whole mechanic of the leaping and the jumping. Everybody was happy with it. And the luggage was a great idea. I do agree that the interactive level would have been fun to jump around on. However, again, the drill makes no sense. I, I, drew, up, I drew up concept art of why it doesn't make sense. There's the mountain, and there's, there's the thing taking over. How did they get around the mountain to lay the track? Why didn't I just go through it? And also, your your blimp had areas beneath the drill, which would be the drill destroying some sections, but then the bottom of the airship is being ripped open. That was one of my problems with this. Team Pen Up, I like the fact that you had fun with the idea. I also like the creativity of it. Going into space, doing something that's not a real job, I do dig, even though it's a little bit deviating from the concept. However, the one thing I didn't like is there was just so much going on. What the hell was going on? Still, good work out there. It was a tough decision, like I said. But in the end, the one that I'm picking, Team Penup. I can't believe we pulled it together, but somehow we did. Yeah. And nonetheless, ended up, once again, Judge's favorite. What? <laughs> to our viewers at home, do you agree with Greg's vote? Remember, you have the power to decide who will be the next game boss. Cast your vote online now and tune in for the next episode on IGN.com.